Yo, what's good, YouTubes? This is your boy in the NYC. It's me, Ray, and this is the EDCC. That's Everyday City. Carrie? Where am I right now? I am in my new spot, man. This is gonna be one of the rooms that I use to do the reviews and stuff. It's our movie room, got the DVDs in the back, I got the cats making noises over there, and I got these bright lights, new lights, that are blinding me right now. And I do that for you guys. So you get a nice, nice wide view. And speaking of view, did you guys see those clips? Amazing, right? I didn't shoot them. My dear friend Mariah Rogers did, and I'd like you guys to give her a sub over at Mariah Rogers. Just search for that on YouTube. I'll put a little link in the bottom in the description there. And give her some subs, man. She does cool vloggy stuff that I do too, but better. But now, to get down to the matter at hand, right? What are you guys here for? We got the Rook P108-SF, and I'm reviewing that today. So stay tuned. Now to me, the most important spec in a knife is the price. And the price, is about $40. What's dope about it, what's whack about it, or if you should forget about it? What's dope about it? The P108-SF's design, I got the stainless steel version here, looks like something from the future. It's got, mm, I wanna say sharp, yet contoured and chamfered lines all throughout. Not sure how to really explain that, but that's how I feel about it. But it all fits really well together, from the shape of the blade, to the sort of geometric-ish lines here. Everything's all gravy. Now the pocket clip is something I always complain about on knives, but not here. Rook knives, and I hope I'm saying that right, got it right on the P108. Because this thing is deep carry, deep enough, and it slides in and out of the pocket really easily. I think that blue circle thing there gives the right amount of tension, so you don't have a hard time getting it out of the pocket. I want to point out the frame lock and the sort of filing work or jimping work done on there. I really like the way that looks, it fits well with the design, and it works man, it freaking works. Disengaging the knife is really easy. I'd also like to mention the extra locking mechanism, which is sort of like an over travel stop, as mentioned by one of my subs on Instagram. And I just want to point out here, don't got a lot of subs guys, don't got a lot of followers on Instagram. So when the community and my homies post and comment on my posts on Instagram, it fuels me. It fuels me guys to make these videos. The P108 has a pretty snappy action. It flies out with authority. That's what most of the other reviewers say. So I'm gonna say that too, to be cool. It's got a really deep thwack to it, which builds that confidence in the knife, you know what I'm saying? The ergonomics are perfect for the fish paws. I love saying that, and they are, because I used this for a week in the office, and it was very comfortable. Cutting up boxes, slicing tape, cutting through paper. It's all good. The blade steel on the P108 is 14C28N, it's a Sandvik steel. And I'm supposed to say, it's better than 8CR13MOV. Shout out to 8CR13MOV. And while I don't know much about this steel, it's true. In my opinion, it's definitely easy to sharpen and maintain. I've only stropped it in a week's worth of use. What's whack about it? Well, you got a slippery flipper, all right? Because with my oily fish paw hands due to the ketogenic stuff that I drink, bulletproof coffee, I often slip off the flipper tab. That makes me very unhappy guys, because you know, I like knives that are flip worthy, I like flipping them a lot, I like bothering people by flipping them, and I'm fine with that. But I'm sorry, P108, you kind of have a slippery flipper there. Actually, I want to mention that the entire handle on this guy is a little slippy. There is no jimping aside from the extra locking mechanism and the frame lock. A Rook, if that's even your name. Put some jimping on this stuff. Okay, thanks. The weight of the P108 is at about 4.16 ounces. Freaking heavy, all right? And uh, there is some weight reduction done on the inside, but guess what? Didn't make a difference. Or maybe it did. I just think that that's a little heavy for my taste, so keep that in mind. 
Now I'm gonna go back to that snappy action that I talked about in the dope section. Cause it's also a freaking stiff action, all right? And I think it's also cause I accidentally grip onto that frame lock there. So that may be a spacing issue with the handle, but it's not an all day flipper guys. It's not, I want it to be. I tried to make it an all day flipper. I've been just flipping it while I'm sitting down at the office in front of the TV, sitting down while watching YouTubes. And uh, no, I gotta say, you gotta be mindful. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk about the blade steel here. I'm not sure if it's the finish or not, but this thing scratched up really easily for me. All right. I don't care about that. I like knives to look worn and used. Just something I'd like to point out. Do you forget about it? Well, no, you don't forget about it. Rook is a relatively new knife company. I hope I'm saying your name right. I've said that several times in this video, but people say it in different ways. Not sure who to listen to. But Rook has been pumping out some pretty amazing knives. And the P108 is one of their older models. I'm late to the P108 party, as usual. Everyone's already reviewed it. But it's okay, because I wanted to check it out for you guys and give you my views on it. My noob views. I feel that at the time that this was released, this probably was one of the number one contenders for budget knives of the year. But now when you've got like Civivi and Tangram pumping stuff out, you gotta kind of think about it. So please consider some of the other guys in the category for $40. But in my opinion, the P108 Baruch Knives is definitely worth checking out. This is your boy in the NYC. It's me, Ray, and this is the EDCC Saint Peace.